Question number nine, Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Education. Does she agree with the Minister of Finance that, quote, the government is focusing on ensuring that every teacher put in front of our children is competent? Honourable Hikia Parata. Mr Speaker, yes, because teachers are the most powerful in-school influence on learning. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will those teaching in charter schools be required to have an appropriate teaching qualification? If not, why not? Honourable Hikia Parata. Mr Speaker, I assume that the member is referring to partnership schools in Kurahaurua. Um, we are still going through the process of confirming them, and uh, they will have the ability to propose that a percentage of their staff are not registered teachers, but being unregistered is not the same as being unqualified. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Sup order. Order. Supplementary question. Chris Hipkins. Supplementary to the Minister. What will be the minimum qualifica qualification requirement for those teaching in charter schools? Honourable Hikia Parata. Mr Speaker, um, as I said, we haven't yet completed the process for selecting partnership schools, Kura Haurua, and in the, what the uh, ultimate outcome will be is that they will have a fixed-term specified contract for delivering outcomes, and they will therefore employ people who have the competencies to deliver those outcomes. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. Sup thank, so, thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary. Given that her answer appears to be none, does she agree Order. with Bill English's statement? Order. The member start the question directly. Oh, point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order. Can, can, if, order. This is a point of order, and it will be heard in silence. I, I'm happy to start my question again, but if you could indicate to me which part of the question you had a problem with, I'd be happy and, to do so. And that, and that will create disorder with a point of order like Sup, that. Supplementary the question. member has been given the opportunity to ask a supplementary, supplementary question. question. I would give him advice that he should use Thank it. You. Supplementary, supplementary question. question. Given that your answer appears to be none, order. does she agree? With order. If the member wants the opportunity to continue asking supplementary questions, would the member take that opportunity and simply ask the supplementary question? A supplementary question, question Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, in question time, ministers answer questions. Order. Is this a point members of order? Are, order. Point of order. Oh, it's now a point of order. Then it is a point of order and it will be heard in silence. In question time, Mr Speaker, members ask questions, ministers answer them. Members are then at liberty to ask supplementary questions based on the minister's answers. Otherwise, what's the point? And I advise the member to go back and look at his question and to go back and look at the answer that was given. The member asked what will be the minimum of qualifications and the minister effectively said qualification, the criteria have not yet been established. She answered the question. Order, that does not mean none at all. So the member... Point of order, point of order, Mr Speaker. Order. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Chris Hipkins. Are, are you indicating, Mr Speaker, that in, allow, in deciding what supplementary questions will be allowed, you are going to give an interpretation of a minister's answer that wasn't in their answer and then determine that a, that a supplementary question is out of order? No, what I'm saying to the member, and I'll give him one more chance... Point of order. I, order, point of order, Honourable Jerry Brown. Well, I was speaking to the point of order, Mr Speaker. It's long been established that a, that a question cannot contain an inference, and that is the offence that the member commits. I, mean, I will hear from the Honourable uh, Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, there was no such inference made. There was a statement made by the Minister. The Minister made it clear that, to date, no requirements for qualifications had been made. None had been made. She indicated that it was possible, but none had been made, sir. And in my view is that you have... You have inferred something which was not implied by the Minister. And, and the Member's totally ent perfectly entitled to that interpretation of the answer. I did not interpret the answer the way the Honourable Trevor Mallard has interpreted the answer. That can often happen. What I ask the Member to do is refer to Standing Order 377, which it will explain to him that the questions must be concise, they must not contain arguments, inferences, imputations, epithets, ironical expressions, etc. And I ask the Member to simply ask the supplementary question. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order. Chris Hipkin. Mr Speaker, I accept that's absolutely um, the standing order that you have quoted is, is, is right, but we have regularly in this House now, in this term of Parliament particularly, moved to a position where members will regularly begin their questions with given that, 
and, the, and that is now common practice in the House, including by members of the government. No. So are, are you indicating now that that practice is out of order? Because that no. would be a significant change no. to what has become order. practice now. I'm not doing that. I'm inviting the member to continue with his line of questionings, but adhering to standing orders. If the member does not wish to do that, I will move immediately to question number 10. Supplementary question. Supplementary man. question, Chris Hipkins. Supplementary question. Have any minimum qualification requirements for those teaching in charter schools been established? Order. And um, I'm going to now ask the member to say it again because of the interjection. Point, point of order. I had trouble hearing that question. I, I'm sure the minister heard it. I, I need to... Order. It was her side that was interjecting. Order. I need to hear the question so I can determine whether it's been satisfactorily addressed for, for my satisfaction. I did not hear it. I'm asking the member to do it again. Supplementary, have any, any qualification requirements for those teaching in charter schools been established? Honourable Hikia Parata. Uh, yes, Mr Speaker, it is a requirement of partnership schools, Kura Haurua, to propose, uh, in addition to registered teachers, what other staffing they may have. But as yet, the process is still uh, under, uh, underway and I can't confirm what the final no. result point, point will be. Point of order, Mr Speaker. No. 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 Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order. No. We're now in a difficult position where the Minister's answer in that one seems to contradict what she said before, where she said it hadn't been established yet. And that is then a matter of debate. The member has further supplementaries, I take it? Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Does she agree with the Bill English's further statement that, quote, parents want to see the teaching profession set the, set the hurdles high enough that they can assume their children will always get a competent, effective teacher... If so, why is she intending to allow unqualified, unregistered teachers to teach in charter schools? Honourable Hekia Parata. Mr Speaker, yes, I do agree with the Minister of Finance's comments in that regard. And can I remind that member that we already have a provision in the 2,500 schools this country has for limited authorities to teach by people who do not hold a teaching qualification? May I further remind the member that in order to be successful in many of our vocational pathways, bricklayers, builders, baristas and bakers do impart skills that make it possible for our young people to have a better choice at a future career pathway and that that is in addition to the vast majority of registered teachers. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. I have a point of order from the Right Honourable Winston uh, Mr. Peters. Speaker, I have listened to these questions very, very carefully. Order. Order. The, this is a point of order. And the, the essence of the questions on which the member sought to ask further questions was, have any minimum standards been established? Now, that is the essence of what was asked, and we still know wiser. Now, despite your rulings and points of order, we are now here on the critical subject issue of this subject, have any minimum standards been established? And the minister has failed to answer. So what is your interpretation of what she said? Well, look, I gave that earlier on a point of order, saying that I understood from a very early answer to this that the minister is saying they're still working on the criteria. Is there further supplementary? Supplementary question. Chris. Point Speaker. of order, Honourable Hekia Parata. Uh, Mr Speaker, in one of the answers I gave, I said there will be a requirement for registered teachers, but a proportion may not be required to hold a registered teacher's qualification. That means that a proportion will indeed hold minimum registered teacher qualifications. Supplementary question. I'm not sure that's a helpful point of order either, but Chris Hitkin, supplementary. Supplementary question. What proportion of teachers will be required to hold a, a registered teacher? Teaching qualification. Honourable Hekia Parata. Mr. Speaker, a significant proportion. However, and that has been clear in the legislation upon which select committee that member sat, and it was made clear that uh, sponsors would be able to propose a proportion that did not hold a registered teacher's qualification. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does she agree with Bill English's further statement? That the core problem is that the teaching profession does not have clear standards for who can be a teacher, and for the vague standards it does have are not often implemented. If so, how does removing the requirement for teachers and charter schools to be registered at all address the problem? 
Honourable Hickey Parata. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I'm not sure whether that is an accurate quote or not of what uh, the Minister of Finance said. But what I do know is that we as a government are focused on raising the quality of teaching and we have put significant money where our mouths are, unlike the opposition while they were in administration, sat around wringing their hands and then allowing a decline in the achievement of all students. This government's not prepared to do that because we know that every New Zealand child deserves a better education and we're funding to that outcome. Question number 10, Mike Saban. Thank you, Mr.